At this point, I'm now going to discuss a few common error messages that you may see and how you can fix them. Number one, 1326. A 1326 or 1326 error is the most common and it simply means that the username and password that you are entering for your work computer are incorrect. It is a very common scenario to see a user enter their LogMeIn ID or email address here, their LogMeIn password, or a combination of both. Remember, you want to enter the username that appeared during the installation and the password for your work computer, just as if you were sitting at the machine in your office. This is why I emphasize the four bits of information at the beginning of the video, because if you enter the wrong credentials five times in a row, you will need to wait a half hour before you can try again. A good tip is to test your remote connection from another computer in your office if possible, so that you can gather these credentials if need be before you leave for the day. Number two, 4320 error. A 4320 or 4320 error or the operator has refused the request error, is the second most common error code and means that you are not an admin on your work computer. This will be more common for employees of larger organizations and requires someone with admin credentials, usually an IT department or the person who set up your computer, to grant you permission to remote control. Documentation on how admins can grant this permission is available below. The third common error that occurs is when you successfully install the host software, but no computer appears in the account. For example, if I was to install on CENTCOM, but that name never showed up in the account. This usually occurs if LogMeIn was already installed on your computer under a different account. When you selected to add your computer, the installer updated an existing version of LogMeIn on your machine. If this is the case, open the Log Me In control panel from the system tray and navigate to the About tab. The subscriber is listed here and it should be your email address. If it is not, then your computer is already part of an existing account under the email listed. You'll want to contact your IT admin, most likely the individual at that email address, and they can extend you the ability to remote control on their existing license. Number four. I get all the way to the last step before I can remote control, and the connection message remains on verifying identity until it times out and doesn't connect. If this is the case, there may be a firewall blocking LogMeIn. An easy way to check this is to click on the Show Details, very small uh, text in the bottom right corner, and scroll down until you see the line Certificate Issued By, and then it will give a company name. If the company name is anything other than global sign, then there is likely a firewall blocking LogMeIn from connecting, and it must be allowed through or whitelisted. In a corporate environment, you will likely need someone in IT to do this, but instructions on whitelisting are found below. Number five, I get a sign on to option when I go to enter my work computer username and password. What does this mean? This means your computer at work is on a domain and you need to select that domain from the dropdown to proceed. You'll want to speak with someone in IT if you are unfamiliar with your company's domain. These are five of the most common questions or errors that we see and should help you if you get stuck. However, if you're still having trouble, try navigating to support.logmeininc.com forward slash pro where you can find user guides, additional video content, and in-depth documentation.